Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So, Tom Barrett. So this is a fellow who's been Trump's friend for 40 years, I say, and he's a billionaire and uh, came from very modest um, uh, beginnings and then just made a fortune really quickly and uh, has been involved in the U.S. government, has been important people, an important person uh, in, uh, in making deals uh, across the world. So let's see uh, what um, the cards have to say for um, this fellow who's just been indicted, as a matter of fact. Uh, he was uh, put in jail and then posted uh, bail. So Tom Barrick, I'll tell you what I know about him. It's just a short piece. So it wasn't that easy to find out uh, very much information about this guy, um, but Wiki had a little bit, and I'll tell you what I know. So let's go all the way back to 1900. Tom Barrick's grandparents immigrated to the U.S. from uh, as a Lebanese Christian, so from Lebanon, and his father uh, eventually uh, was a grocer, and his mother was a secretary. Now, he was born in 1947 on April 28th in Los Angeles, but he was raised in Culver City, California. Now, in 1969, because I don't know what happened between then and then, uh, he earned a bachelor's degree from the University of Southern uh, California, USC, and attended the Gould uh, School of Law. Uh, then in uh, 1972, he got a Juris Doctor from the University of San Diego Law School, also associated with USC. And uh, his first job was at a law firm that served uh, as personal lawyers to President Nixon. So he didn't, but the law uh, firm uh, were uh, uh, served President Nixon. So let's see. But that law firm sent him to Saudi Arabia, where he worked for Saudi princes and even opened uh, diplomatic uh, relations between Saudi Arabia and Haiti. Uh, 1982. So now. He's Deputy Undersecretary of the United States Department of the Interior in Reagan's administration. And um, he had to testify before a congressional committee regarding a gift he had paid to the purchaser of Reagan's Attorney General's house. So he paid the fellow who bought Reagan's Attorney General, he gave him his house, or maybe he bought the Attorney General, but anyway, uh, the fellow who bought the Attorney General's house, uh, this uh, rich fella gives that purchaser of the house a gift. Um, in 1985, he sold Trump a one-fifth stake in the Alexander's uh, department stores. And in 1988, Trump agreed to pay... Uh, no, this is wrong. In 1988, he... Oh, no, this is what it is. In 1988, Trump agreed to pay him, uh, Barrick, a $410 million for the Plaza Hotel. I'm sure there was no cash involved. I don't know, I'm just guessing, but probably all on paper. 1990, Barrick founded Colony Capital and achieved 50% profits in his first two years on distressed properties. So 50% profits in his first two years on distressed properties. That's, you know, you have to look at that and say, wow, how did that happen? Um, he has 200 million in Middle East uh, real estate, uh, 534 million in non-performing German real estate loans, and also owns a uh, Neverland Ranch, you know, Michael Jackson's home. In 2007, he meets Paul Manafort, and he loans Paul Manafort $1.5 million to refinance uh, Manafort's home in the Hamptons. Uh, 2010, Barrick bought $70 million of Jared Kushner's debt on that building that is 666 uh, Fifth Avenue. Kushner later avoided bankruptcy when Barrick then agreed to reduce Jared's obligation. Remember, well, anyway, as requested by Trump. Uh, then, let's see, let's go to France. French President Nicolas Sarkozy uh, awarded him France's Chevalier de Légion d'Honneur. I don't know how to pronounce that in French. And, um, 2011, he has an estimated wealth of 1.1 billion U.S. dollars. Now, 2016, Barrick endorsed Trump and was a major fundraiser through a super PAC, which raised $23 million. 
He recommended that Trump hire Manafort as campaign manager and reassured uh, a UAE ambassador, you know, that's the United Emirates, uh, Emirates uh, country, a UAE, um, well, I guess they're a, a union of countries, uh, ambassador that Trump had investments in the UAE. And he speaks at the national, the Republican National Convention and helps set up a meeting between Trump and the Emir of Qatar at Trump Tower. And uh, after Trump became president, uh, Barack As uh, acted as a middleman between him and Arab princes. Also, this is the year that his wife divorces him and they have six children. Uh, they didn't have them all that year. They had six children and they got divorced, just to be clear. So uh, on 20, in 2017, uh, he serves as chairman of the Trump Inauguration Committee and raises over $100 million plus. He hired Rick Gates to help run the inauguration. And, uh, and then Rick Gates was also a consultant for Barrick's uh, company. But Gates was fired in 2017 in October when uh, he was indicted. Barrick was interviewed during the special counsel investigation into Russian interference in the election uh, regarding Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, Konstantin Kalimnik, and Cambridge Analytica, uh, the Trump campaign, and the Trump transition team, and the financing of the Trump inauguration. Wow. So all of that. Now, in 2019, Mr. Barrick shared a draft of Trump's energy policy speech for approval on the pro-Gulf region language. He shared that with Rashid Sultan Rashid al-Malik Ashani. Ashani? I don't know. But he was a, he's a UAE official. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and the draft was further circulated among Emirati and Saudi officials for further approval. <sighs> then uh, language was incorporated, suggested by al-Malik in uh, the draft that sent to Trump's campaign chairman, Manafort. Wow. The Eastern District of New York raised questions about the inaugural committee donation. So other people in the world are telling Trump what to say um, in his speech. And then 2021, Barrick is indicted as an agent of a foreign power, obviously, uh, obstructing justice, making false statements to law enforcement. He was jailed before being released on $250 million bond that was secured by only $5 million in cash. I mean, $250 million to this guy isn't much, but still that $250 million bond really only cost him $5 million in cash. So, gosh, I don't know. Do you think something's going on there? Do you think he's being groomed uh, all these years of employment by the uh, Saudis? for this very moment that he finally uh, came to realize. Okay, so this is the newest edition. This is uh, the second time I purchased from this group. Uh, and uh, the, these cards are called Revival Art Tarot, second edition. And uh, they're from Taracho uh, Studios, which you can see right here. And they come to me, for, I think it's from Russia via the Netherlands, but uh, they're a lot of money. And um, but they're beautiful cards, and you'll see. So they come in a very typical little cardboard box, no big deal there at all. Um, then the um, instruction booklet again is not uh, anything to write home about, it's just a typical little instruction booklet. The one good thing is that it is easily uh, read, and uh, in the uh, regular, uh, in the lower arcana cards. They've got an extra card in each uh, suit. So, you know, you've got cups, wands, swords, and uh, I can never think of the forward suit off the top of my head, uh, pinnacles. Uh, but so you, they go all the way to the ten of, of swords, for instance. The next one then should be a page. But here we have a princess of swords. And then after the princess of swords, you still get the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. So you have one extra card for each of those four suits. So instead of 78, uh, 79. Uh, 80, 81, 82 cards total in the pack. So that's interesting. So if that princess um, confused you, you could just take those four cards out and use them for some special occasion or never use them at all, or put them in there. And uh, this gives you an idea of how to divine the extra card. Uh, so very interesting. Then the cards themselves, they're really good stock. Uh, once you get them broken in, and what I mean by that is, you know, when they come off uh, production, they're really pressed together, and there's no air between the cards, and you can't hardly get between them. So it takes a little bit of shuffling and, and getting them uh, some air between the cards uh, before they're usable, really, and, uh, and not sticking to each other. And then the back of them is beautiful, and I haven't discovered anything particularly unusual about the back. 
um, except maybe until this very minute. Let's see. If you have the cards this way, you'll notice that there's a very small little rose right here. So if you see that small rose here up at the right-hand corner, then you know this card is going to be upright as it should. However, if this card was inverted, that small little rose becomes two roses. Okay, so if you see it, two roses up here rather than one, then you know that card is going to be inverted. So that's the example. Now, I like knowing that. I don't know. It just gives you a little edge uh, when you're dealing the cards. And now I can straighten them out and not have to turn it over. I know that this, this is uh, inverted and this is straight. Now, to look at this art is amazing. And each one of these is a work of art that's referenced in the guidebook. For instance, uh, if I look at this uh, Fool, number one, with the Major Arcana, and it tells me that the Fool uh, is, in fact, the name of that piece of art is called A Jester by Philippe Mercier. And, um, and then it gives me the uh, divination for the card. Uh, beginnings, uh, possibilities, pleasure, etc. The next card, the magician, if you were to see that one, that is a work of art called The Astronomer by uh, Candlelight. The Astronomer by Candlelight, and it's by, I guess it's going to be Gary Du. So uh, my foreign pronunciations aren't very good, but I do give it a try. So the cards themselves, you can see they go right to the edge of the card. They're beautiful pieces of art, and thought has gone into choosing these cards for the um, uh, position they stand for. The one thing uh, that's not uh, evidence, for instance, um, they're not always um, clear that, for instance, a two of pentacles is a two of pentacles. It might not have two pentacles on the card to tell you that. So they're a little um, interesting there. You should kind of look through the cards and understand what each one stands for first. But I mean, look at them. They are absolutely beautiful and it always feels to me like uh, intention has gone into making the selections of these actual pieces of art before uh, they uh, turn them into uh, tarot cards and I like that and I think you like them too so this fella is something else so Tom Barrick Tom Barrick I mean he's he's very modest of uh, beginnings and upbringing uh, gets hooked up with exactly the right law firm I mean when they sent him to um, Saudi, I mean, he became like a, um, par a, game, a uh, game partner for one of the princes there. Um, so almost like his, his lackey. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then all of his life has been part of um, understanding uh, that uh, culture. And uh, then he comes back and he is involved in the United States government. Good grief. He just had a charmed life in that respect. He was always going to be the uh, linchpin, the, the peg uh, in the, in that, that transferred uh, the wishes of the Saudis to the United States, it seems like. I mean, in the Nixon administration, in the Reagan administration, the Trump administration. I mean, you don't see these people involved in democratic administrations. Um, why is that? Um, you tell me. So... I don't know. It all just makes me feel very uncomfortable. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm going to have to take a minute and kind of um, reinforce. I usually say uh, a little, uh, you can say a prayer. Uh, there's three of them before I do a draw, and uh, I need to refresh that. So I'm going to uh, pause this tape while I do that. Yeah, just felt compelled to kind of refresh uh, my psyche. Um, so we'll just get right to it. Uh, Tom Barrick, what are the questions going to be? The questions for Tom Barrick were going to be, have you been uh, groomed and in concert with this, uh, these Arab uh, nations uh, all along? Have you been groomed and in concert with these Arab nations all along? And then we'll come up with the last question uh, at the end of that uh, draw. So we're going to take six cards right off the top for this. This will be, oh, I got two here. So one, two, three, four. Five and six. Six cards right off the top. I'm going to put these aside and then start to get a divination for Tom Barrick. Have you been groomed and in concert with these Arab nations from so many years ago? Signifier card of this is the Ten of Cups. <laughs> and the Ten of Cups is, uh, you know, happy family. So it looks like that he has become uh, one 
He has become part of the family. That's the signifier. What's the challenge to that? The challenge to that is death. Oh, wow. So death is the end of a cycle. It is um, clearly that. So, yeah, he's been part of this happy family from a long time ago. And it's challenged by that, that partnership is challenged by the end of a cycle. The basis of this reading, then, is the Empress. Oh, yeah, it's been very fruitful, just uh, nurturing. He's had a very uh, prosperous uh, career uh, in this regard, uh, pushing the interests of other countries. And that's that's my opinion right there. But this card just tells me that uh, you know, this started out, the basis of all of this has been incredibly uh, fruitful uh, situations, the Empress card. The past of this reading, then, is the sun. Okay, so we like the sun. Um, I'm, but I'm going to say that the sun had shone down uh, on uh, what was happening uh, here, and uh, and that revealed uh, everything. And then the sky of this reading is the best you can hope for is the tower. Look at this. So this is the tower. So this is complete and utter downfall of the end. Uh, it's a consequence that you don't want, and it is catastrophic. So that's the, um, wow. So that's the sky. That's the best you can hope for in this respect. My goodness, look at that. A long, long, prosperous, rich life that he was able to lead doing these, these things. And then the uh, likely outcome of all of this is the Princess of Wands. And so this is a card that is specific to this particular deck. It's kind of an extra card uh, because there's a princess in each of the suits. Uh, this one being Wands, for instance. Uh, that means I've got four cards above the normal 78 cards in a pack. So the princess then is pretty um, interpretive. Um, wands are action, power, planning. And the princess, this is a very sad looking princess. And so she's leaning on this action and she almost looks, um, I don't know, it's a very sad expression in this princess's face. So I think would say the likely outcome of this is uh, that this last plan that this princess is leaning on uh, has brought her um, not happiness, obviously. So that's where we're at there. So for the last questions, let's see. Will he be uh, held accountable for what he's done? Sadly, he won't be held accountable for everything that he's done because he did a lot of it among other administrations and God knows what else along the way. I mean, uh, So uh, let's see. Will you be held accountable for what you've done during this Trump administration. This, the uh, self of that question is the Knight of Cups. And now this is a very interesting Knight of Cups that we have here. Um, the, the Cups are emotion, passion, um, concern. Uh, this Knight is uh, the fellow who's going to fight in the Royal Suite for uh, the uh, cause, and the cause being uh, passion. So the self of this as to whether he's going to um, be held accountable. Um, I think this is him, perhaps. And look at this. He's writing down a note. So is he going to reveal what he needs to reveal? And this looks like a hat, but if you were, were interpreted as a cup, he's spilling this cup open. And he's writing down something here. And he's looking to someone who's watching him uh, make these notes. That's a very interesting card. This one little card is loaded. He sat down this sword of truth and justice, or the sword, you could say the sword of truth and justice is standing right next to him, and he's leaning on a wheelbarrow, so it's not a very stable uh, situation that he's in. My goodness, so the Knight of Cups spilled his cup, and he's writing down some instructions, and he's looking at, to me at who he's going to hand that to. What's that in the environment of, as if that wasn't enough? Uh, that's in the environment of Four Swords. Wow. And the Four Swords is always taking some time to consider what you're going to do next. This fellow is very unhappy. He's almost prayerful. And he's really gone within himself. If you look at his face, look at his eyes, look at the expression on his mouth, he's gone within himself to try to decide what in the world am I going to do next. And it's very interesting that he's uh, dressed in these kind of, you could say these are Arab-looking uh, garb. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. The um, hopes and the fears for all of this then is the uh, King of Wands and the King of Wands so we're still uh, hovering around wands here uh, wands are action motion planning and the King is the fellow who's in control of his plans of what's going to happen of his actions and I guess the hopes here is that he can somehow rest back uh, and be the King 
of these uh, actions and, uh, and master the plans that are surrounding him. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing then is going to be partnerships, the lovers. Oh yeah. So, and look, this fella is looking at her book, looking at what's written down. She's a little reluctant looking in this uh, relationship, uh, it seems to me. And this uh, uh, lover looks very enthusiastic. Look, he's wrapped his arms around her. He's referencing um, the uh, knowledge that's in this uh, tome that she's holding. So, yeah, I say the likely outcome is that there's going to be partnerships and something's going to reveal to someone who's very eager to get it. Man, that for me was a very clear uh, reading. So I'm pretty happy that I took a minute to just kind of refresh uh, myself uh, with a little meditation uh, before I started this reading again and it looks like it paid off. Uh, for me, that's how it looks to me anyway but I'll go over again what happened here is um, so we started out uh, with the uh, Ten of Cups uh, meaning that you're part of the family you know it's all happy family everything's wonderful and you are um, there uh, right in the middle of it uh, so for me, that's his uh, relationship with uh, the Arabs. Um, it's challenged by what? It's challenged by death. Death is the end, end, end of a cycle. Of course, something new has to start after that. But yeah, it's challenged by the end. Uh, it's underpinned uh, the uh, by the Empress. Very fruitful. So he's had a very fruitful existence uh, uh, nonstop uh, since all this began. So why wouldn't he think that was the way to go? <coughs> the uh, path to that reading then is the sun. So, you know, everything uh, being, um, you know, enlightened. Uh, the uh, sky of that reading was also the tower. So, you know, this complete, utter downfall, not something that you want at all. And then the likely outcome of all of that turned up to be this page uh, or this princess of wands. And if you look at this princess, she's not happy. She's leaning on those plans that, that wand. And not sure, um, you know, about how to proceed, it seems like to me. The, um, then the self of the reading, the last four parts of that, we said, what is the self? Is he going to be accountable for it? And we come up with this Knight of Cups, and it's very interesting that this Knight, his cup, is his, it looks like it's his hat, but if you can interpret it as a cup, his hat is sort of spilled over. He's writing some notes on top of the hat at the last minute. He's propped up on a wheelbarrow with the, the sword of uh, truth and justice uh, at his side. Let's see if I can do this in the reverse image of the camera. And uh, he's looking back on whom it looks like he's going to give that information to. And uh, that's in the environment of what? The Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords is always, always taking a beat to very, be very careful about your next step. And this guy doesn't look happy about what he is perceived to be his next step. Um, the sky of that reading is the King of Wands, which is the hopes and the fears. And, of course, he hopes that he's able to master uh, those plans and become king of these again. And uh, maybe in some respect he does because the final outcome is the lovers. And uh, the lovers, uh, the fella is very anxiously um, uh, in, um, involved in the messages in that book that this uh, uh, hesitant uh, partner is, um, is showing him. My goodness. I think it's clear. Uh, he's going to uh, do what he can to save himself and his money. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.